As you no doubt know, today is Easter, the holiest day of the Christian year. It's also the week of Passover, one of the central celebrations of the Jewish year. And so today I'd like to talk to you about Earth Day. I know Earth Day doesn't really have the status of Easter and Passover. It's not what you call an ancient tradition. It was founded in 1970 as a way of bringing together people who were prepared to be activists on behalf of the planet. But here's the thing. Our theme for this month is restoration. And Easter and Passover aren't really about restoration. Easter is about transformation, about rebirth. And Passover is about liberation, about moving out of slavery and into covenant. And those things aren't exactly restoration. But Earth Day, Earth Day, with its commitment to taking action on behalf of the planet, Earth Day is about restoration. It's about recognizing the damage that we humans have done to our precious Earth and trying to put things back. I mean, I know that the Earth is continually changing and evolving, but the reality is that human impact is so vast and so devastating, there's no way for evolution to keep up. And so what we need is an enormous commitment to restoration, to restoring things to health, to sustainability. Projects of restoration like when people restore creeks, taking them out of narrow concrete channels and allowing them to wander as water wanders, putting back native plants to build up banks, allowing for that natural form of flood control to take place. As the earth is restored to its natural shape, I think about longtime CLF member Ann Wolt and her husband Ralph, who for many years now have restored their property in Wisconsin to native prairie, to that tall grass, diverse landscape that is so threatened in this country. And they're finding a way to bring it back just in their own place, on their own property, in their own home. Acts of restoration are not only acts of beauty, they're acts of hope, of possibility. But the sad fact is that we need a whole lot more than just small things. Anne and Ralph have done something wonderful, but just a few individuals here and there isn't going to be enough to do it because, as we all know, we are threatened. The news is really scary. It's really bad. Climate change is happening faster and faster. Habitat loss is happening faster and faster. And the need for action is urgent. And I'm all too afraid that somehow on a political level, we're going to go from, oh, it isn't really a problem. We don't know it's a problem. The science isn't all in yet to, oh, the problem is so huge. There's just really nothing we can do about it. Too bad. And it seems to me that we need to find a way to live in the space between recognizing the depth of the problem and despair at the depth of the problem. And for that, maybe what we need is in fact the old stories. The story, for instance, of Passover, of a people who had lived so long in slavery that they had accepted it as the way things were. Not that they liked it, 
but they lived with it until some combination of worsening conditions and a man who said he spoke for God induced them to leave it behind, to break out, to go out into the desert and take whatever came. It was hard. They didn't know where they were going. They didn't know what they would find. It was 40 years of wandering before they got to the promised land. But they stepped out. They had the courage to recognize that where they were was not okay. That something needed to change and the only way change was going to happen was to make change that they didn't have to know the solution before they started trying things, starting with gathering things up and walking out into a new land. But they knew that it was worth doing what was hard because the alternative was unacceptable. And maybe we need to remember those people who dared to step out into the wilderness, to find a new way, to try wandering until they finally came home. It's not an easy process. It takes courage and it takes patience and it's hard to see your way to leaving behind what you know. And so maybe we also need the Easter story, which is a story that declares that grief and death are not the end. Imagine the grief and despair of the women who came to dress their beloved leader's body after his cruel and brutal death. And when they got to the tomb, it was empty. Something had happened, something they couldn't understand, some kind of possibility that they had never imagined that declared that death was a beginning rather than an end. It's a strange story. It's a possible story. Consider, for instance, those prairie grasses beloved of Anne and Ralph. Fire sweeps through the prairie on a regular basis, leaving devastation in its wake. The grasses are gone, all of those flowers and rustling blades wiped out. Except they're not. The roots of those grasses go deep, deep down into the earth, and with the rains they grow again. That's their way. That, I have to believe, is our way. The way of deep roots that always bring the promise of renewal, even when fire sweeps through, even when we are threatened. We grow from those deep roots and they bring us the power of choosing restoration. Earth Day, Passover, Easter. Maybe those celebrations, those stories, are what it takes to move us forward into a new land, which is a restoration of the land that we know and we cherish and we want to live.